What would happen if a nuclear bomb exploded in your city? In the first stage of the explosion, which is the stage that occurs in less than a second, a ball of plasma whose temperature exceeds the temperature of the sun will appear, and it grows into a fireball that exceeds two kilometers in diameter. Along the diameter of this ball, everything will die. You can liken it to drops of water that fall into a very hot pan. What happens is the splashing and popping of this drop. Then it vanishes into vapor. In the event of a nuclear explosion, most buildings, cars, trees, statues, and people will evaporate. At first, in one second, a huge tsunami of light will sweep through the city. And if you happen to have your head turned towards the explosion, you will be blind for a few hours. The heat of this flash will generate an energetic thermal pulse, and it has a very high temperature that will burn everything located within a radius of 13 kilometers and its center is the site of the explosion. What this means is that everything that is combustible in an area of 500 square kilometers will burn, such as plastic, wood, fibers, hair, and leather. The second stage, and it takes several seconds to complete, in which most people will notice that something is not right. It will be too late for hundreds of thousands of people. What will happen is that the flash of light will be followed by the shock wave. The fireball's heat and radiation around it will generate a bubble of superheated and highly compressed air, which is now expanding explosively and faster than the speed of sound, causing winds stronger than hurricanes and storms. No human-made infrastructure can resist it within a kilometer of the fireball. The buildings will be level with the ground, and only the steel-reinforced concrete will be able to partially resist the pressure. Of course, the shock wave will weaken as it moves away from the epicenter of the explosion. But the houses located in an area of 175 square kilometers will fall as if they were made of paper, to become tens of thousands of people who could not act. Prisoners of these ruins, gas stations will explode and flames will spread through the rubble. A mushroom cloud will rise. It consists of the remnants of the fireball, ash, and dust for several kilometers in the sky in the next few minutes to cast a dark shadow over the ruined remains of the city. This cloud will spread heavily through the fresh air that envelops the city, destroying more homes and people just like you will rush to the windows to take pictures of the mushroom cloud, unaware that the shock wave is on its way to them. She is about to shatter their windows, causing a storm of sharp pieces of glass. The third stage begins in the next few hours and days. We are accustomed to the idea that help will come, no matter the scale of the disaster. But this time is different. Hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of people have been seriously injured. There are lacerations, broken bones, and serious burns. In the next few minutes and hours, more thousands will die as a result of these injuries. A large number of people will be trapped under the destroyed rubble, as in the case of an earthquake or become blind as a result of a strong flash of light, or they will become deaf as a result of the shock wave about fleeing through streets made bumpy by rubble and debris, confused and afraid, not knowing what hit them, or why did he hit them, and most likely it will level. Many things are flat on the ground like other buildings. The medical professionals will either be dead or injured beside everyone else. As for the survivors lucky enough to be in a tunnel meter or standing in the right place so that it is not burned or exposed to other injuries, so we cannot say that they survived so far, given the type of weapon and the location of its explosion, as well as the weather. An awful black rain could start to fall, laden with radioactive ash, which will fall on the city and cover everything and everyone. Let the roll of silent and hidden terror begin. Every inhale will be loaded with toxins into the lungs of the survivors. And in the following days, people who are exposed to high doses of radiation will die, and there will be no help for hours, where a complete collapse of the infrastructure occurs. Roads are closed, railways are cracked, and transportation routes are littered with rubble. There is no water, electricity, communications, or shops to compensate for the shortage in supplies. Rescue teams coming from neighboring cities will have a difficult time trying to enter the disaster area. Even if you could get in, the radioactive contamination would make it very risky to get too close to the affected areas. After all, you will be on your own after a nuclear attack. And so, slowly, people will emerge from among the rubble on their feet, contaminated with radiation. 
carrying what they can carry of what they have left. They will move very slowly, hurt and shocked by what happened. All of them are in dire need of food and water, and prompt medical intervention. The damage caused by a nuclear weapon does not end once the flames die down and the smoke clears. Hospitals in neighboring cities will often lack equipment to deal with such a disaster. It will also be filled with tens or hundreds of thousands of seriously injured people. In the months and years that follow, many of the survivors will die of various types of cancer. We can say that the reason why no government is available. Opportunity for anyone to think of such a scenario. It is the absence of any possible major humanitarian response to a nuclear explosion. There is absolutely no way to provide real emergency assistance to the victims of a nuclear attack. The situation here is not like a hurricane, wildfires, earthquakes, or just an accidental nuclear accident. What happened is all of these things combined. But worse, no nation on Earth can handle an event like this. The world has changed over the past few years. Today, we are witnessing many world leaders publicly threatening to use nuclear weapons. Many experts believe that the risk of a nuclear conflict today is higher than it was decades ago.